What is up guys, Austin Nurcho here back again with another Monday Night Rewind podcast. We go back 20 years and cover Raw from 1998. And so this week we're looking at February 9th, 1998. But before we get into the podcast, I just want to remind you that you can listen to this podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud under the Monday Night Rewind podcast. So you can search for those and subscribe to it and listen to it there. Or you can find us on YouTube on the Awesome Nerd Show channel and all those links are in the description down below. So you can find it there and don't forget to subscribe subscribe there as well. This week, as I mentioned, we're going to cover Raw, and then we're going to hit the fast-forward button and come into 2018 and cover current events that will bring, uh, of course, my brother in Maverick, and we'll cover current events that are going on in the current day. But first, we're hitting the rewind button, going back to February 9th, 1998, and covering Raw 246. And this took place in Evansville, Indiana, so we're still in my home state of Indiana. And then it got a 3.2 rating. So this is one of the lowest ratings Raw is going to have here for the next, I think, two weeks. Or it may be low next week. I forget. I looked at the ratings. But um, it's going to be low for a certain reason. And then I think the same rating next week. And then it just starts climbing until they take over Nitro. So we're in the building stage of building up Raw to take over Nitro in the Monday Night Wars. But this show will kick off with uh, Sunny singing Happy Birthday and she's dressed up like Marilyn Monroe and trying to do the whole um, thing that Marilyn Monroe did singing Happy Birthday. I forget who it was too, but I know I've heard about her doing it before, but Marilyn Monroe is a little beyond my age of knowing stuff. But I remember she did a whole birthday thing. I think it was for like a president or something maybe, but um so Sonny's dressed up as her and singing happy birthday to classy Freddie Blassie because it's his 80th birthday. And so they're doing just a happy birthday thing for him on this show. And then from there it goes into a replay of the attack last week of DX on Stone Cold after the match with uh, Billy Gunn, I think it was, or Road Dog, I can't remember which one he faced. But their attack at the end where they trapped him in the ropes and everything. And so it just covers that and so we go to actual show opening. And we come back to Stone Cold coming out to the ring to cut a promo. And so as he's coming down to the ring, he's carrying a white bag, but it's not like shown or we don't know what it is. So it could be anything in the bag. Not exactly sure. And he starts a promo off with talking about Sean. And he's saying, Sean, you don't come out here on Raw and rub a title belt in my face that you just don't do that crap. And at In Your House, No Way Out, the next pay-per-view coming up, which I think is maybe the next, that Sunday maybe? I don't know if it's that Sunday or the next week. But he says, you know, In Your House, I want a piece of your ass. And so he then challenges Shawn Michaels to come out to fight right then and there. But he's kind of just standing there waiting. And DX ends up popping up on the Titan Tron and they're in the back locker room or whatever. Just sitting there talking to him. And Shawn's saying, you know, you don't call the shots around here. I do because I'm the champion. And he says, if you give me a good reason to come out, I will. But it's got to be a good one. And so goes back to Stone Cold. And he says, you know what? I've got a good reason for you. And Sean's like, oh, yeah, what's your reason? And Stone Cold's like, because I've got your belt. And Sean's like, oh, yeah, you've got my belt. And Sean starts, like, looking around. And he's like, wait, where's my belt? And he starts yelling, where's my belt? Or, no, he picks up a bag where he thought he had the belt, which was really flat. And so I was like, well, obviously the belt's not in there. But he picks it up and opens it up, dumps out, and it's like a little, like, looks like a styrofoam or plastic toy belt falls out. And he's like, where's my belt? And he starts freaking out, and they start throwing stuff around. And Stone Cold comes back, and he's like, I've got your belt, like I said, or whatever. And he picks up the bag and just dumps out, and out falls the belt. So somehow Stone Cold got the belt, but obviously this is all, you know, fake stuff or whatever. So he just got the belt from the back. And so once the uh, Sean sees that, he just freaks out even more. And they start throwing the chairs and stuff around the locker room, saying he wants his belt back. And also says, you know what, I'll be around all night. So if you want it, you can come back, find me, and get it. And so that sets up events that we will see happen throughout the night. From there, we go to the LOD taking off Jeff Jarrett and Barry Windham, who, of course, they come out with the NWA of Jim Cornette and Rock and Roll Express along with those two. So they all come out to the ring. Um, in the match, it's not a big exciting match or anything, but in the match at one point, Barry Wyndham attacks Animal from behind when the referee is distracted, so Wyndham's not the legal man and stuff. So they're using cheat tactics. And then at one point, the Rock and Roll Express and Jim Cornette attack Hawk on the outside, and they start slamming him down onto the stairs, and Jim Cornette hits him with the racket. So once again, just using cheating tactics while the ref is distracted or messing with other people. But of course, at that point, Hawk wasn't the legal man or anything. But they end up throwing Hawk back into the ring, and Animal is fighting with uh, Barry Wyndham at the time. And Jeff Jarrett comes over and starts fighting with Hawk, and he puts the figure four on Hawk. So the ref's distracted by Animal and Barry Wyndham because they're the two legal men. 
but Jarrett's in the middle of the ring with Hawk in the figure four, and so the ref's just kind of like looking around like, what am I supposed to do right now? Until Bradshaw ends up running down, and he, of course, climbs into the ring, and that causes Jeff Jarrett and Barry Windham to run out of the ring, and he chases all of the NWA guys to the back. And so, because of Bradshaw coming out, which of course he has issues with Barry Windham because they used to be partners until he turned on him and everything, but because of that, um, and Bradshaw attack, or because he, he does make contact with, I think, Jared or Wyndham or something. But because of that, the NWA gets the win by disqualification. Then we go to our next match, which is Pierre from the Quebecers taking on Henry Godwin from the Godwins. And so this is a match because of stuff that it showed footage of, like, Shotgun Saturday Night and stuff. So just that they have issues, and I think they're going to have a match at In Your House, or at the uh, No Way Out pay-per-view, not exactly sure. But at one point, Pierre does a dive over the top rope onto Henry Godwin on the floor, and he almost missed it. So he pretty much did, like, the Undertaker dive from that WrestleMania 25 or whatever. So he just ran across the ring, just did a dive over the top rope, and he just, oh, Henry almost didn't touch him at all. And so Pierre almost died, in my opinion. But then back inside the ring, Pierre goes to do a flip off the top rope, just like a forward flip. But Henry moves out of the way, and that allows Henry to get the upper hand in the match. And in doing so, Henry at one point hits the ropes, and Jacques, who's up on the floor, of course, just stand at ringside, he ends up grabbing a hold of Jacques' foot and tripping him up. So Henry turns around and starts, like, trying to reach out for Jacques, like, trying to get him. And Jacques, uh has a bucket because they came out with a slot bucket like the Godwins do and he ends up hitting Jacques on the head with it and so that causes Phineas to come around the ring after Jacques and uh, Jacques runs into the ring to get away from Phineas and that has the referee distracted at that point trying to get uh, Jacques out of the ring and while he's doing that Phineas is able to hit Pierre in the head with a bucket and that allows Henry to roll over and you know get the pin on Pierre for the win so the Godwins end up winning there. Then we go to the back where we have China coming, walking through. It's kind of like the parking area, like an inside parking area. But she's walking through and she comes up to a table with the um, lo all the Los Briquas sitting at it. And she starts speaking to him in Spanish, which I don't remember China even talking at all. But it's weird that they're having her speak in Spanish and like you can hear her voice and everything. And she says, of course, says, you know, some words are in English and stuff. So it's like, I'm surprised they're having her talk at this point, just to talk to the Bariquas. But she's talking to them, and she's pretty much just getting them to help her uh, against Stone Cold, or help DX to find Stone Cold and attack him to get the belt back. And so that's what we got going on throughout the night of DX, or China using the Bariquas to get the belt back from Stone Cold. Then we go to our next match of Brian Christopher and El Pantera taking on Takamichi Noku and Aguila. And so it's mentioned that Taka will be in a match against Pantera at No Way Out for the Light Heavyweight Championship. So that's kind of why this match, the whole match is going on. But at one point as the match kicks off, they're just doing a lot of um, fighting with each other. And at one point, Taka and Aguila end up doing a, are both doing a drop kick on Pantera, who is standing up on the apron. And when he does that, El Pan or Pantera ends up doing like a front flip out onto the floor onto Brian Christopher, who had just been sent out a few seconds before by Taka and Aguila and so he that's kind of cool that they're using one guy to do a move on to another and then since those two are out on the floor now once Pantera and Christopher get up Aguila goes running across the ring and does a corkscrew screw plancha over the top rope onto the guys and then Taka does a similar thing but just does his crossbody springboard or thing that he runs across the ring jumps up on the top rope and does a crossbody out onto them out onto the two guys then back inside the ring as Brian, Christopher, and Pantera get the upper hand. At one point, Brian ends up pulling a foreign object out of his tights and it puts it on, you know, I assume supposed to be like brass knucks or something and goes to hit Taka. But Taka ends up getting a roll up or something on him. And so the foreign object goes falling out of his hand onto the mat. Well, Pantera comes in and he grabs and picks up the object and puts it in his mask. And then he goes up top and does a jump off the top rope and hits Taka in the head. So it does like a headbutt onto him as Taka um, has a, some sort of submission move onto Brian Christopher is holding him or pinning him or something. He's just doing like some sitting on top of Brian Christopher like holding him like a submission or something. But Pantera does the headbutt onto him with the supposed foreign object in his head. So that knocks Taka Michinoku out. And Pantera is able to get the pin on Taka to get the win for their team. 
Then next up, we have Kane and Paul Bear coming out to do a promo. And so Paul Bear comes in and he just recaps the events that have went on between Kane and Vader, of course, because they have their match coming up at No Way Out. And so he's just recapping events and just showing footage of what's going on between them. And then Paul Bear ends up, uh, he keeps, or Paul Bear mentions that he's, you know, I'm tired of hearing it's time, it's time, it's time, it's not Vader's time or something. And he holds up a clock and it had like just a little like clock with hands and stuff. And he, uh, it has Vader's face on it and he hands it to Kane and Kane's holding it in one hand. And then his other hand, he's holding it like he's, you know, like presenting it like, yeah, look at this thing. But he's just doing it weird with his hands and all of a sudden there's a pop and the clock lights on fire in a small part. So it's just kind of weird that Kane supposedly was able to set it on fire with powers. But then Paul Bear just blows it out the flame and stuff and ends the promo. Then we go into hour number two where it kicks off with Ken Shamrock and Chains coming out with the DOA and Ahmed Johnson. Of course they're a team that's going to be at the pay-per-view taking on The Rock and Farouk coming out with the nation so those two teams are going to be taking on each other in the war of attrition match at no way out but as the nation comes out the rock grabs a mic and starts to cut a promo and he's talking about he's been doing this i just have never like paid much attention to it like noted or whatever but he comes out and is like i bet you all want to know my opinions on and he'll say like a current event and so he's talking about on genetic cloning and so he's talking about cloning people and he's like but none of you here in you know evansville are worth cloning and all that sort of stuff and just like you know running down the town but soon into once the match actually starts chaos breaks out so both teams just all start fighting with each other and then i believe it starts with someone getting knocked outside and the team opposite team attacking that person and then their team members come across and they just all start fighting so it's pretty much is all chaos well back inside the ring while the chaos is going on ken shamrock ends up hitting a hurricane rana on fruit and then puts the ankle lock on him so he's holding the ankle lock on him waiting for fruit to tap and the ref's distracted i believe by all the fighting and stuff well the rock comes running in with a chair and he just smacks shamrock right in the face with a chair like just, it looks like it was just dead on to the face i'm sure shamrock like ducked his head a little so it hit him more on the forehead but it just looks like the rock just smacked him flat onto the front of the face and i'm like i've never seen that before it looked crazy but so that knocked shamrock off and farouk's able to roll over and get the pin on ken shamrock as the ref got back in the ring and so the nation gets the win there and of course because of that once shamrock gets up he just snaps and so he hits a belly to belly suplex on the ref and then chains is trying to you know like calm him down and he hits one on chains as well and so that causes all the DOA to come in and just get on top of Ken Shamrock and just like hold him or whatever trying to calm him down and eventually they do. Then we go, so we got parts of the footage throughout the night, but it's footage of the WrestleMania press conference. So it's kind of like a press conference. There was a table set up with all the guys, you know, Vince, Sean, Stone Cold, and Mike Tyson, everything was there. And they, you know, got up and talked to say stuff about the event and everything. Well, um, there's, like I said, little parts were shown throughout the night, you know, like kind of like hyping this up or whatever that they were going to show this footage. But so they show most, I assume most of the whole thing because there were like big gaps of stuff. But uh, it's announced, though, that Mike Tyson will be the special enforcer in the match. And then at one point, Tyson, ends when he's talking, ends up criticizing Stone Cold for hating everyone. He's like, maybe you should just love people or give love a chance or something like that. He's going on about Stone Cold. And so, so, of course, Stone Cold responds as he would, you know, about kicking ass or something like that. But then towards the end, Austin ends up getting up as Sean's talking and saying stuff about Stone Cold. And so Stone Cold gets up and starts to walk towards Sean and they kind of like push at each other until Tyson gets up and he gets in between the two and he's just like holding each of them back. So it's just continuing on that build to the main event for WrestleMania. Then we come back in China and the, the Bariquas are in the back again looking for Stone Cold and they're just looking all around at different rooms and everything. And then we get our next match of Recon coming out with Sniper from the Truth Commission and he's taking on Steve Blackman and so the match is nothing special and of course it's overshadowed because uh, soon after the match starts the Jackal ends up dropping down from the ceiling on this big giant platform and he's got like a podium up there and he's just standing there cutting a promo the whole time and he's just talking about telling that they're delivering the truth to people and he's just going on the whole match and of course talking about his stuff of being compared to a cult leader and stuff and he's just saying that's not what he's about he's about love and everything and so he's just going on and so this continues this promo just continues throughout the whole match and um at one point the crowd starts chanting shut up at him but in the end steve blackman ends up putting on some sort of submission 
finish a move on Recon to get the win. And as soon as the bell rings, that's when the Jekyll stops because he stops and like looks over at the ring. Like, what just happened and stuff? And so he stops the promo there. So he had to cut a very long promo. I mean, not that the match was super long, but I'd probably say five, seven minutes maybe. And so... As soon as Steve Blackman ends up leaving the ring, the Jackal gets down from the podium and goes into the ring and he just starts yelling at Recon of, you know, saying what I've done for you type stuff. And he eventually slaps Recon in the face and that gets Recon all mad so he's, you know, stamping around and looking all angry and stuff. And so Jackal turns his back to him and holds his arms out like waiting for Recon to attack him but Recon doesn't. And Jackal then like turns around, smiles and then does like a peace sign type thing. Then we go to the New Age Outlaws coming out for a whole promo thing. And so they come out onto like the stage area. And they just start talking about reminiscing about last week. And dumping Cactus and Chainsaw over the stage. Or off the stage in the dumpster. And so they're like you know maybe we should reenact it. And so Billy Gunn goes over to the curtain. And pulls out a dumpster from behind it. And as they're talking about stuff. They throw to a replay. And so it shows the footage of them dump pushing the dumpster off the stage last week and then he's like okay let's reenact the events and so they push the dumpster off the stage um onto a thing on the ground below it's kind of like a padding or stuff it looked like and so then they go down there and you can see like some things are hanging out of the dumpster and they pull them out and they're two d like dummies and they're dressed up as cactus and chainsaw and just so they pull them out and uh, start acting to do like CPR and stuff on them and stuff. But they just mentioned that they will sweep what remains of Cactus and Chainsaw under a rug at No Way Out. So again, I assume they're going to have a match. I don't remember him saying, but I assume by that that they are going to have a match at No Way Out. Then we go to back again and China and the Brequels are still searching for Stone Cold. And at one point China says, you know, I'm going here, you guys go there. And so she goes up like a set of stairs or something and the Brequels go towards the door that China pointed at. And so get, they go through the door and the door has a window on it. So they're so the camera's like looking through the window of them searching through other doors in this little like area. And then you hear a noise and uh, Stone Cold comes up by the door and he has a chain and he puts the chain around the door handles and locks and stuff so the break was are locked out and so they're trying to pull on the door trying to get it open but the chain's holding it shut so they can't get in and stone cold leaves and then eventually china comes back and she's trying to get the door open but can't so she just kind of walks away then we go to our next match of Goldust taking on Thrasher. And so Goldust comes out with Mark Merrow and then Sable and Luna. And then Thrasher comes out with Mosh, of course. But before the match starts, Merrow ends up sending Sable to the back once again. And Goldust is also dressed up as Marilyn Manson once again. So that's just like the setup of what's going to happen here. Um, at one point in the match, I thought it was funny. Goldust, Thrasher ends up doing a move to Goldust and Goldust loses the wig at one point. So I thought that was funny. But then Luna ends up tripping up Thrasher as he bounces off the rope once again. And it's, that allows Goldust, you know, to get the upper hand. Well, after that happens, Sable ends up coming back down the ramp. And she's not wearing, because she was wearing Marrow's robe again, or a robe like Marrow's. But this time she doesn't come out wearing it. So she's, you know, wearing like a black leather outfit type thing. And she's confronting Luna and stuff about doing that. And he, she's like fighting with her. Well, that causes or distracts Goldust. And Goldust comes over and he's like sticking out through the ropes, like, you know, trying to get him to stop fighting and stuff. And Sable looks at him and she ends up slapping him in the face. Well, after she does, a Goldust starts like fall backwards and stuff. And as he's doing that, Thrasher grabs him and rolls him up and gets the pin on Goldust. And so outside, Sable and Luna are fighting with each other still, and they start shoving each other until at one point Sable ends up slapping Luna. Well, as soon as she does that, Marrow grabs a hold of Luna and Goldust comes out and grabs her and a bunch of refs come running down to separate Luna from Sable to keep them separated and stuff. And I just thought it was weird that that many people needed to separate Luna, but they did what they had to, I guess, just to make it look big and try to protect Sable. And then we go to our last segment of the night, which has DX coming out to the ring. And so they get in the ring to cut promo and stuff. And Sean's just talking about how he's not waiting for No Way Out to get his title back. And Sean demands Stone Cold come out to the ring right now to give him his title back. And so Stone Cold ends up coming out to the ring. And when, of course when he comes out, DX ends up like getting out of the ring. And he's chasing him out. Well, then the New Age Outlaws end up coming out. So all four of them are trying to get in the ring. But Stone Cold has the belt. And so he's just swinging around and keeping the guy, uh, four guys from getting into the ring. And at one point, they get around on one side, like on the ramp side. And 
since they're all on one side, Stone Cold drops the belt. He's there, you know, like egging him to come in and fight and everything. Well, as he's doing that, he, like I said, he dropped the belt. Well, China sneaks around him and goes over and grabs the belt from inside the ring and then sneaks back around or whatever. So they have the belt back now and they start to get it like head towards the ring. And then there's like chainsaw noises that start to be going on. And eventually Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie end up coming up from under the ring. And so they get up and stand beside Stone Cold. And then Owen Hart comes running in from, I assume, the crowd. Because that's the area he came from. And gets in the ring and is standing with him. And the New Age Outlaws start to get in the... Or the DX and New Age Outlaws start to get in, up on the ring apron and start to get in the ring. But they're all quickly knocked back out again. And I think Cactus, Chainsaw, and the Outlaws are kind of fighting a little bit on the outside. But Sean and Triple H ended up running back up the ramp. And then the Outlaws eventually joined them. And so they're all just standing on top of the ramp. And Sean's up there posing with the belt. So that is the match that's going to happen. I forgot about that earlier. So it's going to be Stone Cold, Owen Hart, and the Cactus Jack and Chainsaw against DX of Triple H and Sean. And the New Age Outlaws. So that's going to be a match at No Way Out. So that's going to be it for Raw this week. Nothing big or major happened that I can think of no big events or anything happen like to me I guess besides building up for the pay-per-view kind of the biggest storyline type thing is the builds toward later is the Sable and Luna stuff of them having confrontation with each other but that's you know not that big of a deal so I can see why their ratings kind of went down for this week I don't know what Nitro did I need to read a thing but their um, rating was down a little bit too um, so I don't know if there was some sort of event going on at this time for why the ratings went down a little bit. But so that's going to be it for Raw. Like I said, not that interesting of Raw, but it was still enjoyable to watch and everything. So that's going to be it for this episode of Raw. So we're going to go to the fast forward section. But before we do that, don't forget, like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, where you can find this and listen to it again on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. On iTunes and SoundCloud, you can listen to it and then follow the pages there by subscribing and stuff. And then on YouTube, you can subscribe and, of course, leave comments and stuff. And the podcast comes out every weekend. And then don't forget, down in the description below, you can find links to our Patreon page where you can donate there for just a dollar to help support the channel and you'll get a shout out. And then we also have our Teespring store where you can get a shirt of the Awesome Nerd Show logo based on a Star Wars type design I guess or you can get the a shirt for the podcast with the podcast logo on it the MNR podcast that kind of looks like the old Raw is War logo so you can get either one of those and that helps support the channel a lot too so don't forget to check out those links and don't forget you can follow us on social media any of the places at Awesome Nerd Show so don't forget to check those out so we will now get into the fast forward section so now we're in the fast forward section and Maverick will not be joining us this week. He has some issues going on so he will not be joining us so it'll just be me. And so with this section we will fast forward into the current times and talk about the 2018 stuff going on here. And so we're going to go through some of the stuff that went down over the past week and stuff. Um, so the number one story we probably have even though it's not like a huge story or anything. But one of the biggest things that came out was the issues of going on between Booker T and Corey Graves. So this came out so obviously we know Booker T got uh, switched out last week from commentary with Jonathan Coachman back again and so Booker T was switched out no longer on the commentary table for Raw and he's now been moved back to the pre-panel shows for pay-per-views and stuff and so Booker T ended up went going on his podcast or a podcast he does or something and talked about the events and stuff and he brought up so I'm going to kind of paraphrase some of the stuff he said there so he started off by saying about Corey that he would beat him down and whip his ass if he got the chance that Corey is the reason that he's no longer on the Raw and that people thought like from the backstage like management and stuff thought that he was going to jump on Corey and take him out to the woodshed if he if Corey kept going on with what he was doing and he continued on by saying you know if I see Corey in the street I'm going to do something to him and he goes on to claim that Corey is messing with his money and so that's why Booker T is all angry about this because Booker T says you know like I'm a good person but when you get on my bad side and especially if you start messing with my money I have an issue with you and so I assume by that that he's saying you know with him no longer being on commentary he's not going to be making as much money and so that's affecting his money even though he wasn't even supposed to be on commentary anymore. But because of David Otunga leaving a while ago, they brought Booker T back and he's been on commentary since then, even though it was just supposed to be for a short time. So if anything, Booker T's been making extra money, you could say. But um, So he's going on all this about Corey. Well, the only thing we have is a couple things from Corey that's been said. Well, first he said some comments on Raw um, about 
Booker T or mentioned stuff about commentary related stuff of Coachman saying some stuff and corresponded, but I didn't uh, get to catch those, but I did hear what he said. But the closest thing was that on the Edge and Christian podcast, Corey Graves was on there like a week or so ago. They brought up Booker T and stuff, and Corey meant, you know, talked about that Booker T sometimes hard to understand what he's trying to say or talk about, and so he's having issues. But he says, though, that Booker T is one of his favorite people in the company. And so, you know, he's saying, I mean, you know, he's saying you can't understand what Booker's saying sometimes, but he's still saying very nice things about Booker. And then Booker T turns around and says what he does about Corey. So I don't know what's all going on there and then um after the whole news and stuff of booker t's podcast getting spread around and everything Corey ended up sending out a tweet that quoted the art of war which of course is an old book about how to fight a war and stuff like that and he like just sent out a tweet with stuff from that so it's you know kind of plain is that something's going on here but i feel if this was real which i mean i'm not saying it's not but i feel if it was that Corey wouldn't be allowed to say anything. Booker T would get in trouble because he still works for WWE because uh, he does the pre-shows and everything. So I feel they would get involved, you know, tell them to stop all this. But they just keep going back and forth and Corey makes comments and stuff. So I don't know if this is a whole, like, joke thing going on between the two. And they're just kind of, like, messing with each other. Or if this is real. I have no clue, but I don't see what the big deal is i mean booker t to me wasn't that great and i just thought he was funny on commentary because of all the crazy stuff he said but i don't see why he should be that upset at Corey for it just because Corey does a better job than he does but that's just my opinion and i don't really care at all what's going on between those two i just know that's a big piece of news the next up, we found out that Cody Rhodes will be taking on Kenny Omega in a match, but it's not going to be at New Japan. It's going to be at um, Supercard of Honor 12, the Ring of Honor paper or show that goes on before WrestleMania on Saturday, April 17th. So it's WrestleMania weekend. They do a show in the usually around the same town as WrestleMania to try and draw all those wrestling fans into their show as well. And they do this Supercard of Honor, and it's not on pay per view or anything. So the only way to watch it is to go there. And they have some pretty good matches i know last year they had the young bucks taking on the hardies and so they just kind of put on big matches to draw people into their shows so that's kind of interesting that they're going to have that and that'll be cool to see what goes on there and then that will lead us into raw so we're going to cover some of the stuff that happened on raw so we got some more elimination chamber matches review or uh, revealed or stuff going on with that so we had the match of roman reigns taking on bray white to open the show and roman reigns ended up winning there which was kind of obvious as always roman reigns wins everything so he's advancing to the elimination chamber and then later on we got the match of miz taking on apollo cruz and the miz got the win there i think probably through um some cheating or distractions type stuff but i doubt apollo would have won so it makes sense that Miz won. So Miz is advanced to the match. And then we got a match of Elias versus John Cena against and Braun Strowman. All three, which had their matches last week to get into the Elimination Chamber. Well, they all had a match, and whoever won got to enter at number six into the Elimination Chamber. So we still have one person not in the Elimination Chamber. So I don't know. I assume maybe next week that we will fight, figure out who that last person is going to be. But Elias ended up winning that match, so he's going to be coming in at number six. So he has the best advantage out of the group, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to win. So it'll be interesting, though. They Next week they are having a last chance match or something with the other people that were in the matches to have another match and whoever wins that gets to be the last person in the elimination chamber and i'm just hoping myself that it's going to be finn balor but you never know and then we got the announcement of the women's elimination chamber so of course last week we mentioned that they're going to have an elimination chamber that stephanie announced it but this week kurt angle announced all the competitors and it's going to be alexa bliss bailey sasha banks mickey james mandy rose and sonia deville well then, soon after that announcement, Alexa ended up coming out and she kind of confronted Kurt Angle about why does she have to compete in the match when Brock Lesnar doesn't have to compete in his match and just kind of raised the stink about that, that she doesn't think it's fair and he was using the whole sexist line and stuff on Kurt Angle to try and like get him to take her out of the match so she could be champion longer. And I guess by that would mean trying to go into WrestleMania as the champion. But so we'll just, I don't know who's going to win there. I would, I would probably think Alexa would retain the, the title, but you never know. It could be Sasha and Asuka would end up facing her at WrestleMania. I don't know, but I somewhat feel Alexa will retain the title. 
And then there was also announced that Asuka will face Nia Jax. And if Nia wins that match, she will be added into the WrestleMania match along with Asuka for whoever she chooses. And they made it sound like it's going to be whoever the Raw Women's Champion is. But Asuka has still not chosen who she wants to face. But they said Nia will be entered into that match as well. But I somewhat doubt that Nia will win. But you never know. But that's going to happen at Elimination Chamber as well. That match between those two. So that's kind of all the big news we got from Raw. Then we'll move on to SmackDown. Um, not much happened on SmackDown as it usually doesn't, but we did get the top 10 list. And so this top 10 list, which I thought was kind of funny ever since the announcement of it, but it's a top 10 list or it's a power ranking that's voted on by the wrestlers. So these are all, all these people are chosen by the wrestlers in the back, supposedly type thing. And it was announced by Daniel Bryan, who has one of the most ridiculous haircuts I've ever seen or his hairstyle right now looks absolutely horrible he looks like one of the three stooges it's it just looks bad and i'm surprised brie lets him go out the house like that but um we're, so we're gonna work backwards from number 10 so it was ty dillinger randy orton becky lynch the usos new day bobby Roode, naomi shinsuke charlotte and aj so they're all faces which would make sense since it's supposed to be you know voted on by the wrestlers and since the faces are the good guys the good guys are gonna you know be the nicer people in the back because it's like i tried to look up what all the criteria was i know it's been mentioned but i couldn't find it and it said you know like on back room or back or locker room leadership and match quality i think just all sorts of crazy stuff and it just sounds all stupid why they did this but it's all good guys it's weird that ty you know he's hardly on tv at all but apparently he's good enough to get on the list at number 10 which is obviously just because he has the whole perfect 10 thing but I just thought that was kind of weird and funny, but I don't know about this top 10 until it starts taking effect because it's supposed to be used to try and get management to see who needs to be war like pushed up into title matches and stuff like that. But with the title winners all at the top, it's kind of weird. Um, and then the next part that we got in the show was the match between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens that I mentioned last week where they're facing and whoever won the match would get a face AJ at Fastlane, which is this SmackDown's pay-per-view. Um, but no one ended up winning the match because AJ ended up interfering by punching Sami Zayn because Sami Zayn was outside kind of like running his mouth to AJ who was sitting at commentary and so AJ got up and punched the mouth so technically Sami would have won by disqualification but I don't know if that would have been good enough to get him into the match since it was by DQ but because of that no one ended up winning the match and so it was announced that it was going to be a triple threat match at Fastlane with Sammy versus Kevin versus AJ but then Shane on Twitter because I just looked checked to make sure all this stuff was up to date and everything before recording this and I did see that Shane McMahon did announce that on twi his Twitter that the winner of the Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler match that will be happening next week whoever wins will be added to the title match and it will be a fader fatal four-way at fast lane instead so either of those i could care less about i don't like either one i don't want to see either one so i don't really care who wins because i don't want whoever it is to win and then i guess going from there to we'll go to 205 live since i guess that happens after smackdown and so um we kind of got some additional news and then stuff that happened on the show so the outside news is that was that it was published or announced that Triple H has taken over 205 Live, that Vince has given up the reins on 205 Live, as you could say, and has given them to Triple H. So Triple H is now running it. So I guess that could be why the past two weeks since the introduction of Drake Maverick or Rockstar Spud into the as the GM and stuff and the new people into this tournament stuff, why it reportedly, at least I don't watch 205 Live, so I wouldn't know, but reportedly got better, or I mean, you know, better in general, not just like it's, oh, it's so much better, but just like increased with quality and stuff. But they're going back to, you know, doing this whole tournament stuff for who's going to win the or get the title. And so it's kind of throwing back to the Cruiserweight Championship, which was run by Triple H and stuff. And so I think this is going to be really good in that Vince isn't going to be doing, having his hands on it to control it and will at least get it closer to NXT, which is always good. So I think 205 Live will do a hell of a lot better. But some of the matches we got were Kalisto, who beat 
Lince Dorado to advance to the championship tournament match to the second round. And then we also got Roderick Strong beating Hideo Tommy in what I heard was a really good, hard-hitting match to advance to the second round as well. So I was surprised that Roderick won since he's, you know, not been officially announced or whatever to be on 205 Live. You know, I've assumed that Hideo would have won kind of like um, last week with Tyler Bate losing to TJP since he's not officially on 205 Live. Why would he win and stuff? But Roderick did end up winning. And then we also got a video package on Mark Andrews, who will be joining 205 Live starting next week with his first appearance. So he was from the UK Championship Tournament. Um, he's pretty good. He does a lot of high flying and stuff. I don't think he's super amazing or anything, but he is pretty entertaining. And that's who Maverick brought up last week about bringing him because of he has a past connection through TNA and stuff with Rockstar Spud. So that could be why they're bringing him into this. So that was kind of all the news that we got from 205 Live. Obviously, there were some other matches, but nothing of note or anything. And then we'll go to NXT, where not a whole lot happened on NXT, but we did get announced that there will be a match of Andrade Cien Almas, who came out and challenged Johnny Gargano to a match for the title again, but it's under the stipulation that if Gargano loses, his career is put on the line, and so if he loses, he'll be out of NXT. At least I saw it was NXT. It could be out of Wrestling General, but I assume it'll be NXT. And so maybe this is how he loses and gets moved up to the main roster. I don't know exactly. But Selena Vega and Candice LeRae were also involved in this whole segment and stuff. And Selena made the match or accepted Gargano's match as long as he put his career on the line. And so that was kind of big news. You know, Gargano, after having that amazing five star match at TakeOver, is now going to put his career on the line just to try and win the championship. And the last piece of news that we have for the week, which was just came out earlier today, I saw that Dave Meltzer has reported that Ronda Rousey has signed a multi-year deal to WWE, and it was kind of revealed why. I don't know where he got the information from, if it was like he had talked to somebody, which I mean, he always talks to people, um, but he's it's been reported to him or told to him, whatever, that they signed this deal and brought in Ronda Rousey. All to make her as a foil to Stephanie because they want to try and raise Stephanie McMahon's profile outside of the WWE. So try and make her a mainstream name and well known. And it was compared to how what happened to Stone Cold with Mike Tyson back in the 20 years ago. The stuff we're talking about in the Monday Night Rewind. So that Tyson was brought in and because of that name it put the attention on him or the attention that he brought was in like, well, what's he doing? Well, he's doing this stuff with this stone cold guy. And so people tuned in to watch that and saw the stone cold guy thought he was cool and stuck around watching and wanted to watch stone cold. And so they're trying to do that similar sort of thing with Stephanie and then also kind of make her kind of like the Vince McMahon who, because of that also became a big character and is a mainstream name as well. Of course, now he's got the XFL and stuff making him a mainstream name, but um, they're trying to make Stephanie have a bigger profile probably to get stuff uh, more popular and kicking off and going and stuff in the WWE to help kind of pick up revenue more and stuff. So I thought that was kind of a big thing. Like, you know, I thought I think it's kind of stupid that I thought, you know, they would brought Rousey in to try and make money and stuff, which they are obvious. I mean, that's obvious, but then also do it to try and help out Stephanie. So I believe if that is the case and is true, then I can almost guarantee that we are going to get the Ronda Rousey and a tag partner against Triple H and Stephanie, or at least her in some form against Stephanie at WrestleMania, if that's what they're going for. So that looks like that's going to be it. That's all the news that I got that would seem kind of important of stuff going on this week. So that's going to be it for this fast forward section. I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. If you did, let me know in the comments. And don't forget, you can listen to us on iTunes and SoundCloud. On iTunes, you can subscribe and download. And SoundCloud, you can listen to it. Or you can find the podcast on YouTube under Awesome Nerd Show, where you can find this and all the sorts of other videos that we post almost six days a week. And then don't forget, in the links down below, you can find us on the, our Patreon link and Teespring, where you can help us out and help support the channel. And you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook I Awesome nerd show to keep up with all our content but i thank you for listening to this monday night rewind podcast and we will see you next week